This is WOMMLP operating at Burlington, Vermont, 105.9 The Radiator. Good evening, it's The Rocket Shop. I'm your host, Tom Proctor, and with me tonight is Carl Miller. Hello, Carl. Hi. How's it going? Good. Good. It's a bit chaotic before we started here, but... Uh, it's fine. Excuse me. Yes, it's fine. The I'm doing well. Thank you. <laughs> Good. The interview section is usually... I'm doing better chill. with the microphone, that is for sure. Yes, you did not have to shout in order to be able to be heard over the, uh, over the radio. Um, well, we usually like kicking it off with a song, or a tune, at sure. least. So, um, I'm not sure if your tracks are named, but if you would like to introduce your first track. And it's uh, a song for my mother, I wrote. It's called Song for My Mother. All right. Take it away. off there with song for my mother uh very emotional song uh, yes i guess it's it's oddly poignant for me right now i've got some some pretty my, my mother is not well herself right. at the moment so it was it's right. interesting that's the song that you started with this evening uh, it's a little significant bit. for me my mom uh was ill for many years uh growing up I, as i was growing up and passed away when i was 15 and it was very very difficult i was the baby of the four boys and um, it's just it stays with you forever and ever and ever and um, you know it was just unfortunately our mind will go back to the dark moments yeah and and it's just it's a pretty song because it was it's a sad song I think but at least for me it's a sad song <laughs> but it's a great homage to her for me at least I guess uh, your songs, you know, being lyricless, being a solo guitar player, uh, a gorgeous one, by the way. It was, it's, Thank it's you. It's a beautiful song. Uh, it does leave the, up for the audience's interpretation of how they they, they interpret it. Right. Do you, uh, will you do you find that your songs evoke the emotions that you that evoke for the, yourself? when you play them, does anyone ever come up and go, oh yeah, that song in particular, that tune in particular really? I, the, the common, I, I do keep a music diary mm -hmm. and uh, every gig I play like six times a week uh, at different cafes and nursing homes. And I keep comments, I write them down. 
and the, a very uh, common comment is it's beautiful. It was so beautiful. And I, I get it from young men, older men, young ladies, older ladies. It's all, all types. But I find it curious. Um, and then I get a lot of comparisons. Oh, that reminded me of so-and-so. Mm -hmm. But I do, um, you know, I, I, as far as my mood goes, uh, the thing I'm known for is I don't have a set list. I play for my mood of that moment. And it can be wonderful. We'll find out about tonight. And it can be a disaster. And it also depends on how anxious, nervous I am. But I do play for the moment. Do you feel like it's ever noticed if you feel like you've had a disastrous gig? No, no. Is it more of a personal thing? It's the thing? typical, you're too hard on yourself. Yeah. Most people never are listening that closely or would notice. I think also, I mean, you're a remarkable player. Not many people have your kind of skill set when it comes to um, the, the, your ability. And obviously being a solo artist, you have to kind of carry it every tune yourself. I, and I love that. Yeah. Have you ever actually looked into to being in a band or has it always been kind I, of a solo I used endeavor? to be in a band, not so much for guitar. I did run a, 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 a jam band. We played it first night a few times, mm. and I ran a, uh, a jam band at Montpelier High School and Montpelier Middle School for years, as in seven years, eight years, and um, I did play guitar in that, but it was just a jam band. It was, you know, it was, the, 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 those kids are phenomenal because they bring everything to the table, and they're so open to different tunes that you might play but I mostly played in bands, drums, jazz drums, in jazz bands. And I finally went back to um, guitar uh, full time, permanently, so far at least, uh, because I like playing what I want to play. I, I got tired of, if I can be blunt, babysitting, <laughs> where the guitar player would say, oh, I don't want to play that song. So it was very difficult, and I was the manager, so I had to keep everybody happy. So I went back to playing solo guitar, playing what I want, when I want, where I want, <laughs> where I want. And I do enjoy it uh, immensely, but I do miss being in a band. I do miss the, the people. We had some great times. Yeah, I guess you, that, that camaraderie and that shared experience kind of goes out the window. Pop. And the challenge, too, yeah. playing at different venues and uh, playing to the crowd. And uh, But I have some... <laughs> there's a reason I'm playing solo guitar. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I heard you playing at Nomad down the road. Right. And I think it was the second or third time that my fiancé and I had heard you play. And sure. each time we were like, oh, we should tell them about this This. Yes, it's this great. This little radio thing that we do. And um, I'm glad we caught you on that third one. But you do have this remarkable ability of uh, at least getting us to really sit up and listen. I mean, obviously right. we're there to do work or just have a coffee. And often you get musicians in the corner of coffee shops that are largely unnoticed or or ignored a lot of the times and I feel there's something about the way you play that Thank you. is Thank very you. magnetic I, it, it, it's hard for uh, me to um, give myself any credit here because of um, I know my shortcomings and the things I can't do if I can say can't that I'm really not interested in doing but, so I don't do them but my style of playing is, has evolved over the years and it now is this, I, I'm, I, I don't, I'm illiterate as far as reading music goes. So I guess it's a legato style. It's glissando. Um, I, I, um, I do medleys. I don't take breaks. I play 45 minutes straight with a little motif in the middle. You might have noticed, noticed mm -hmm. that in between every... And I learned that from Miles Davis would do that as the beginning and end of every set. They'd go mm -hmm. to the theme. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, wait, I can do that. Something simple so people will understand. He's finished with that little snippet and he's going on to another. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yeah, it's. Um, I, I can't say that that thing. I, I think because each song is, is, as I said, quite magnetic and really draws your attention. I don't think I ever really noticed the kind of, you know, uh, sure. B- b- vignettes in the middle, I guess, to denote that you were finished or you're starting. Um, and do you get, I mean, obviously you, when you're playing in nursing homes uh, or even coffee shops, you obviously get people coming up and, and talking to you, but do you notice it's a, if it's a certain type of set? You said you never really write anything down, you don't really have a set list, but right. has there been any kind of surprising moments when uh, a particular set has really drawn people? It's hard to say. I mean, I will play Italian songs on, uh, if I can say, Columbus Day, mm-hmm. uh, Indigenous People's Day, it's called now. But I, for years, would do Italian songs on Columbus Day and Christmas tunes around Christmas. And um, I, it's hard to... It, there's so I play so many places, it's hard to... I, I'm focused more on the comments and... Um, things I, I, I wish I had played that I didn't play. Mm. Some, some days and nights I come up empty. Yeah. And, and I wish I did have a set list, but then it would take away some of the so-called magic of the moment. And again, I stole that from Santana. Mm. Apparently, Carlos does not have a set list. When you get up on stage with him in his band, he'll call a tune and you better know it. <laughs> and that, again, I, I happen to... I never knew that until recently, but I love Carlos Santana. Yeah. He's always been an inspiration. Yeah, obviously an excellent, ridiculously excellent player. Um, you mentioned that you're musically illiterate in terms of you know, writing music. What does that look like when you are writing a song? Do you improvise each song you play to an extent, or do you know exactly what it is you are playing while you're playing it, and you're just bringing it up from the I, memory of the first time you made it? Again, I can I can, uh, I can uh, not give myself enough credit. <laughs> because I can see and hear my shortcomings. And that is, I often play, I believe, in the same key. Mm. Um, I will go back, yes, I will take a tune, I will know what I'm playing, and then I will... The nice thing about improv, the magic, is you will discover things that, that work. And it's, they're, they're, it, it's, it, it's an interesting... I don't know. My my style, I find, is um, it's easy for me because I can go from one tune to the other. Before this evening, I was explaining to people earlier tonight about how I um, I can just go from one tune to another and then come back to it and play another snippet part of it Mm -hmm. and then go back play it in uh, on a different string starting focusing um it's there there are variables that i have i have a different picking style for certain tunes um i don't do very many chords uh i guess it's finger style it's called so i don't even know if i answered your question pretty much i'm also (laughs) wondering do do you ever when you are writing in in commas uh when you're writing a tune um what does that even look like because if you do how much experimentation is there or how do you know at least when you are done with that song that that song is written even if it's imprinted in your brain again it could be um my mood at the moment um i i um i'm frustrated because i don't write music down i don't remember certain tunes my daughter will say dad you wrote a tune for me years ago when i was in middle school i can't remember the tune <laughs> yeah. to this day so i don't i i just i don't know i i my my writing it is again it's handicapped because of the fact that i don't read that's definitely one perspective. I guess another perspective is that it's kind of almost Buddhist. There's something freedom. Very, I have a lot of freedom. Yeah. Well, there's no no permanence to it. It's like writing or creating a piece of art on the sand. It's going to exist for while it exists. I've heard people say that I play with dissonance, mm. uh, which is a fancy word for mistake, perhaps. 
Uh, but I do things like that. I, I, I mentioned the word just now, freedom. I love the idea of freedom. And I go back to freedom with, a, again, not having the band, being able to play what I want, uh, when I want. And it's just, it ties into me and my personality and um, the way I am right now at this stage in my life. It's, I mean, obviously not a jazz style, but it is the kind of at least the philosophy of jazz in a way. Again, I've had people commenting, I'll never forget in Waterbury at a place, the guy said, yeah, I'm here listening to this classical guitarist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm a classical guitar player. Yeah. And then other people will say, uh, I play on Church Street uh, at a cafe, mm. and they will say, uh, I like your jazz. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I, well, I just, I'm happy that they enjoy it. Yeah. I guess it could fit into multiple different genres, really. Right. Have you named it yourself? Do you have a genre that you would call it? Um, I don't think I really have. I've made a few posters before, and what did I... I, I can't recall right at the moment. So, um, but it's... Um, it's uh, I, I can't remember. Isn't that awful? <laughs> well, it's not. But, I, I think it's... It would be it would be against I guess the character of your music if you could remember. Right, no, it's uh, it's something. It really is. But I enjoy it so much. It brings me so much great pleasure. But what brings me the most pleasure is when people enjoy it. Because I play for free. I don't even like to put out a tip jar. Because it's disconcerting. I'll think that person's going to give me money, and then they don't give me money, or they do give me money. So I don't put out a tip jar, because I just want to play and have people enjoy it. That's all. When you first started doing gigs in the coffee shops, you say you play six times a week, and I was like, right. it's very often. There's not a thing that I do six times a week. I don't even go to sure. work six times a week. Um, was that kind of the, the the amount you played from the beginning? Or did you do this once and you were like, actually, that's a real rush. I'm actually seeing people really enjoy this. W what was the evolution of your kind of live playing, this this dedicated art that you have put yourself if, to doing six days out of seven? If, if I remember, and I could go back to my journals, that's what I love about when my mom was dying, I used to keep a journal. My the mental, I would go to Rutland County Mental Health because I was having trouble uh, with anxiety attacks, mm -hmm. severe, severe anxiety attacks. But I did manage to graduate from high school thanks to my counselor. Mm -hmm. And she told me to keep a journal, that it's wonderful, tonic. Mm. And I have pretty much ever since. So I'd have to go back to look. But as I recall, uh, it was when my marriage was going south. Mm. And I wanted to feel good. And I would play at a coffee shop in Barrie. Uh, um, and that's where it started. I would play every Sunday morning. And I, I like playing in the morning. I don't like playing at night. I don't like the the alcohol thing, the nightlife, the, the all of that. I, I like the having a gig during the day, like you've seen me, mm -hmm. and being at home at night. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always been that way. I've never been a real nightlife person. So it evolved with that Sunday morning gig. It was uh, like a church uh, service mass. And a lot of my music was that way. It was um, soothing and, again, as I said, beautiful. Yeah. A lot of people would say that. Uh, and it just kept going and going and going. And then I thought, well, that's a, a shop that I have a good vibe in. I should ask them if they'd like me to play. And so that's, it's brought me all over yeah. to Rutland. I play three times on Sundays in Rutland. That's where I'm from. And um, every other Sunday, I play at a nursing home down there, which is absolutely phenomenal because of the fact the, the, the people in the nursing home have to try to remember the tunes. Mm. And they're challenged with dementia and Alzheimer's and such. And it's, they love it because they'll say, that was, you know, pennies from heaven or whatever. And... Uh, it's 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 great for me because I really enjoy helping them. 
it's funny you mention that. So my, my mother is ill with dementia. And um, so I was over there this summer. And I've noticed this before, but her dementia is pretty, pretty advanced at this point. And she, I think for most of the trip, she didn't know who I was. But you stick on ABBA or you stick on David Bowie or any, any song for the 1970s. Sure. She knows every single word to every single song. Right. And it's incredible someone who doesn't recognize her grandson and granddaughter or her kids. Um, Bailey's recognizing my father anymore and yet still knows every single That's lyric to Gimme, Gimme, Gimme. And it's it's funny how the brain works, but I really I right. love the fact that you do play in uh, nursing homes because it's such uh, it it gives folks with those terrible diseases such a boost morale. Oh, it's, it's un- before I did it uh, on my own playing guitar. I played in a jazz band in Montpelier. We played a nursing home every other week, mm. and uh, Angie Zorzi, the piano player, she used to have a big band in. St. Johnsbury. By now she'd be like 95. She passed away like five years ago. But she would sing and play piano. And I would be playing drums and we would be doing polkas. We would be doing all the popular songs mm-hmm. from the time. We'd do Duke Ellington, things like that too. And the people just were... I mean, I think I do a pretty good job. Angie was magnificent because of the vocal. Right, and that plays obviously. And, and we had a, we had a, a sax player, bass player, drummer, and piano with vocals, and um, it uh, <laughs> it was uh, you again uh, the jogging of the memory, and people would be crying. Yeah, because it's so emotional. They would remember that was the tune that her husband loved before he passed away. It, wow, it, un- it unlocks a part of the brain that is been atrophied for so long right and i don't quite understand how it works because obviously it, it it must be using a different area of the memory banks or something but it really does make a huge difference and, and put that into today at cafes where st- oftentimes there's students mm-hmm. studying so i don't want to be uh obnoxious i want to be in the background mm-hmm. and and helping them and I've had a few instances where I was too loud, they said. Mm. And if you've ever played an instrument in front of people, when you get that comment, it's very difficult. I could imagine, yeah. You, it, it kind of, if I can say, ruins your day. Yeah. Because then it just opens up a whole thing. But I don't focus on that part. That happens very rarely, but it does. But I have to be very aware of the fact that when I'm playing at these places, like at Nomad, Mm -hmm. you can oftentimes hear a pin drop because they want to focus on their schoolwork, which is what is important, really, truly. But this sort of music is perfect for studying. I mean... Right. Yeah. I'm glad you don't focus too much on those those comments. Often people are just having a bad day themselves. <laughs> it is. As I've said before, I used to be a teacher. Oh, okay. As I've said before, you could have a hundred things happen wonderful uh, during the day and one not so wonderful thing, you'll go home at night and most always be dwelling on the one bad thing. Yeah. So the nature of humanity, I guess. Yes. Um I can rabbit on for ages about this sort of stuff, but we got you here to play, so right. we'd love to hear another song. Okay, that's great. <laughs>
mention the name of the song for that one. Did it have a name? I'm not very good at promoting. <laughs> and I'm not very good at writing names of tunes. I remember buying albums and they'll say song number one, <laughs> song number two. Get so upset. Well, we'll call <laughs> well, that one. This is what you have. <laughs> that was song number two. Song number two there by Carl Miller. Um, so one thing that you wrote in your bio is you didn't come into playing guitar until you were in your 30s. Um, seriously, seriously, right. But I did start off and on. Yes, it's okay. true. 30s. But you really sort of kind of dedicated yourself to the guitar. Yes. From 30s onwards. Absolutely. Um, which obviously is fairly late to kind of really get yes. into it, especially for someone with your kind of skills. Um, I was talking to my fiance about it. And we, we were both discussing how, how rare a thing that is to pick up a skill like that and have the kind of proficiency you have in it. But see, there's a story behind that. Oh, well, I'd like to hear that. And that is, uh, I started uh, playing tenor sax. Mm -hmm. And that most likely has something to do with my style of playing the guitar. I play vertically. I don't go across the fretboard often. Mm -hmm. I don't play chords, just like a sax. I don't believe a sax can play a chord. Although someone out there in <laughs> radio land is probably upset with me. <laughs> but um, I, um, I play single notes, just like a sax. Mm -hmm. And I focus on tone, just like when I played sax. So I went from saxophone to guitar. I started with guitar, and then I went to tenor sax for years, playing by myself. And then I went to um, guitar, seriously, in the 30s, mm. dedicating myself. How quickly did it take to kind of hone your sound so you've obviously got a distinctive it, style of play when did that come it, it i started with a pick mm. and i don't use a pick anymore and part of the reason for that was uh what if you know i'm a what if guy what if um what if uh someone hands me a guitar somewhere and says here play this oh, i don't have a pick <laughs> i can't play and because it's happened to me with my friends mm when Michael didn't have a pick, so he right. couldn't play my guitar that I just bought. So I thought, I'm not going to use a pick. Yeah. And then it, 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 it just, it, it, I'm driven by my ear, mm. okay? I play by ear, as I've said before. And I, I then just evolved into a certain type of playing. I, again, I get uh, comments on how I have a drone and I think I did that a little bit in that last song number mm -hmm. two and I do will I will and I've had people come up to me like I'll never forget in Chelsea Vermont the library at an art show opening the lady said you've listened to a lot of Indian music haven't you oh, and, it's very and, like. and I hadn't <laughs> of course but so it's I don't know it's just it's again, it's the freedom of, of not having any real restraint. Uh, you know, music teachers would be upset with me. I took sax lessons for a while, mm -hmm. and I don't like lessons. I, I never, I took Italian lessons because I became a, an Italian translator. That I could put up with. <laughs> but the music thing, uh, I, it, it didn't work out. How did that then translate to you teaching children? I mean, it's to be a jam in a jam band, admittedly, right. but it's still see, teaching. There's still rules to it. Right. Extent. That's see again. It's it's a freedom thing, that because a lot of the kids had never had a chance to play drums, mm. or bass, or guitar, and I had all those instruments. They were my own. I I would bring them, and I would leave them there in the music room, and it was just to witness that with those kids. I always wanted to play the drums. Can I? Sure. <laughs> you know? And that's, that's how I, I just, you know, I, and, and again, being a jam band, I didn't realize about Fish. I would never had heard of Fish. But I had heard of Grateful Dead, and kind of the tunes go on and on and on. And, uh, I mean, I can dig some of them, absolutely. And I can dig Fish. But um, 
that was, again, a freedom for us because we could take different themes, different tunes that the kids would play, a little of uh, Smells Like Teenage... Team t- smells Like Team Spirit? D- yeah, something Kirk like that. Of, uh, as in Nirvana? Yes. Yeah. And, and they would bring that, and we would play a little bit of that. I wouldn't know it, so they would teach me. I've forgotten it in the meantime, of course. And it would just be great because we could go from one part of that, we would just go to other parts of, we would again do a medley, mm. like what I do. Yeah. But they would do it with covers. So is, you would be teaching, we would be teaching through kind of a, to, through learning, through tactile learning from... Just experience. Practice. And the, the music teachers loved me. Yeah. Because the kids got to play and there were, there were no rules other than getting along with one another, being respectful and respecting the instrument. Right. Uh, and that was something they were not used to, <laughs> and they ate it up, as you can imagine. Yeah, and probably a bit of a learning curve on that one, at least. Um, well, we'd love to hear another song. Sure. So, I, I'm going to switch to my other guitar. Yeah, you go ahead. And um, I hope we don't hear a pop from my... Uh, what do you call it? You chord. Very well mined. supposedly silent chords. <laughs> uh, yeah, our equipment in here is uh, well loved, but maybe a bit old and yeah. has a tendency to pop and crackle a little bit sometimes. <laughs> Ghosts in the Machine, as Bob said, yeah. So does this, uh, this song have a name or is this song three? <laughs> well, song number three by Carmilla.
right, song number three there by Carl Miller. I noticed you uh, switched to the twelve string for that song. Yes. How how long did it take you to to pick the correct guitars for for the way you play? <laughs> I, I imagine you probably got a library of them back at home. I do. I was uh, telling people today earlier how many I have. I have a lot of guitars. <laughs> And that's a problem because I have a hard time choosing. But the 12 string always brings a different uh, air to things and it fits my style. Um, but it, it has to be set up a certain way. I set up all my guitars and I should be able to pick up any, this is one of my little philosophies. I should pick up any guitar of my collection at any time, being able to play it well anywhere unfortunately it doesn't work that way because oftentimes i'll second guess like tonight's guitars i think the 12 string i picked right away uh, like today <laughs> 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 i mean i've known about this 25th of uh, october for a while yeah. but um the other one the six string i i oh boy i went through a lot of different guitars even yesterday I played Monday and then Tuesday. I played Monday once in Burlington, Tuesday twice, and today's Wednesday. And the, the guitars I brought Monday, I rejected. Mm. And the guitars I brought Tuesday, I rejected. And so I went back to this uh, particular one. So it took me a while. How do you know what's... What, 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 before you go out, not just for this gig, but you know, you play very often... Uh, how do you go, okay, it's going to be these two guitars today or these two guitars today? How do you... What I, makes again, the that's changed. I used to have a different guitar for every gig. And now I've been getting lazy and just having one guitar for the week. Mm. Um, if I play at a restaurant where I have to play two 45-minute sets, I will bring a couple of guitars. Mm -hmm. Um for variety and for stimulating my own imagination. Mm. But it, it really depends. Like the chair I'm sitting in, it, it's dependent upon my posture. Since I play sitting down, it's not so easy because my elbow will fall in a certain way. The thickness of the guitar, the width of the guitar. Um, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. this 335 is, is deeper than the, the other that I'm playing. Mm -hmm. And I, like I played a Les Paul yesterday, twice. Yeah, Tuesday, twice. And it was too small of a body for me. I'm thinking, I need something substantial to hold <laughs> on to. I'm going to be a little bit anxious. Right. So it's tough. It's almost your shield today. Is, is I'm holding on to this. Yeah. It's my blankie. <laughs> it's, so it's far, wall. it sounded pretty good. It sounds excellent. I've been at gigs before where my, my fingers were literally just shaking <laughs> well, I'm glad. so far so good i would say today i have to cut my nails every uh few days you know yeah because if i get a hang nail it'll catch on the string and it's just a disaster yeah that's the gig ruined i guess i interrupted you what were you going to say uh if you can remember <laughs> can't remember that question i do notice you've not got any pedals with you is that never been a, a pet? No pedals. I don't like. I, I, the only reason I have this oh, yeah, reverb. Sorry, that one. Yeah, I do. Is because this Koch doesn't have much of a reverb. Mm. It's supposed to, but it doesn't. And I uh, need reverb. That's the only effect that I like. Uh, I don't like pedals. I like simplicity. I like a small footprint. Um, and again, not swing, singing. Uh, I don't have to worry about the monitor, the PA, any of this stuff, mics. Uh, I love the simplicity of that. Do you ever play acoustic? I do, yes. And the, the, to just maybe give you a, a, a little fodder here, uh, a lot of the music I'm playing, I was, it was COVID music. It, I would go to Oak Ledge Park, bring mm -hmm. an acoustic guitar, six string or 12, and I would practice, and I did a whole medley, uh, like a 40-minute medley, which is a lot of this that I'm playing today and every day, mm -hmm. everywhere, is from that COVID uh, medley. And I would play acoustic. I'd play under the, um, the, um, 
the the wooden you know um, yeah the, the, the tree house thing I, no I, that one I didn't do oh. that was in way behind but I did the first building as you drive in yes sometimes the back one yeah where first night would oftentimes have a party during the summer um, you know previewing mm-hmm. first night for um, for the uh, first night of yeah. the year but I would go there in even 40 degree weather and such I would do it in February January did you get an audience did people ask? sometimes oftentimes it would be kids moms with their children in their strollers it was uh, but it wasn't so much that it was I needed to get that out there like everyone else we were all holding on to something mm-hmm. hoping for the best and trying to stay alive and that's what I did and it it, it was wonderful well, thanks for that you've got a whole new repertoire of songs what, what were, <laughs> did you sound entirely different pre-covid you know that's a good question um i have some recordings i, I don't like recording as i said earlier i'm not big on self-promoting i believe in playing the music and having it float into the air and mm. and be gone and i um I do have some of my older recordings, home recordings, just a simple cassette. And yeah, it, it's changed. I was into Marshall amps, stacks, distortion, um, rock, and I don't do that anymore. So I, stri- I'm finding more melodic. You stripped it back quite a lot then in the last few years. As far as? as I mean, uh, if we were going for more distortion, rockier, I'm assuming probably a bit louder. Um, and now it's, I don't know, as you said, it's a pretty simple setup you've got. It's, I wouldn't say simple songs, but they're very crisp. There's, they're ethereal. They're quiet. Right. Um, and it sounds like, I mean, although I wouldn't know unless I listened to it, that it, it used to have a little bit more substance to it whereas now it is it's dreamlike right i i've done i've played um bars before and i've i've attempted to and notice i say attempted to um to uh, distort what i play and it can sound wonderful i mean it it can but i you know i i'm not it's something it doesn't work for me anymore i just i i need soothing um you know, as I mentioned about my divorce, my life has changed dramatically, and I need uh, help. And the way I find help is through m- melody and melodic and um, pretty music, if I can say. Yeah. And again, freedom uh, to do it as I want, when I want, how loud I want, with what I am, I want, and. Uh, I, I eventually, I, you know, it, since I play by myself so much to a fault, I really need to play. Like I've been playing at a cafe with a piano player who mm. can read, who went to music school. And he, uh, I have to do it all by ear. And we have to find a key that works. So I oftentimes have to switch strings, which I'm not used to because I play by myself. I, I, th- that's a regret that I have is I don't play with other people and learn other music because when you have a group someone will call a tune like Angie used to do mm-hmm. and we'd open a book I wouldn't but they would and they would see the melody and they would play it and it was it was great I, I, and I will do that eventually I was going to say, I feel like there's, uh, there's a few more chapters for you to write musically. Uh, it seems I like... I started late, though. You even uh, might have alluded to that. I, I, I did, did a start bit, yes. late, and I <laughs> kick myself all the time. I'm very good at that. I'd certainly say you caught up. When I walk down the street, people say, see that man? He kicks himself a lot. Just look at, <laughs> look at him. Uh, I don't think that's the first thing we thought about when we, we were listening to you. I would say you've certainly caught up and... Um, but I, I just, I, I wish that I had started earlier. Yeah. But yeah. It, it, it's the way reality is. I'm dealing with it, and I'm enjoying it. Yeah. And what more is, uh, you know, what more is there? 
I would say uh, you, you've created something beautiful here. So I just wish I could remember that song I wrote for my daughter. Maybe one day it will come back. Oh. <laughs> I hope she's listening this evening. Um, we've only got really time for one more song, but before I'll, I'll let you play song number four, um, as you mentioned, you play six times a week in coffee shops across Vermont. Right. Um, what have you got coming up for, I would say, like the next week so people might want to catch you? Okay, can. I have to think. Number one, today is a very unique, special day. I have a, uh, now i got to think of what it's called. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, it's not Facebook. What's the other uh, one? Twitter or Instagram? Instagram. Instagram. Today I got Instagram. Oh, congrats. Carl S. Miller okay. with a K. And so I eventually will, <laughs> I promise, Daddy, to... Uh, <laughs> uh, to post stuff on there but mm -hmm. where am I playing in a week I have to think this next week let me think now. Yeah. hold on tomorrow uh, see I'm moving out of my building that I sold in Montpelier mm. for 50 years it was our families mm. I have to be out of there by the end of the month so Thursday is out Friday I'm playing at Nomad mm -hmm. on Flynn Avenue at noontime and then Sunday I'm playing in Rutland at, I have to think, Last Cup Cafe on West Street at right, right around noon. And then I'll play later in the day, around 3 o'clock, at Mountain Music on Center Street. It's a music store. And it's what you've heard tonight. Mm. Same idea. Yeah. In a different setting. Yeah, a lot more guitars to pick from in that case. And then you can see me even closer and see if I kick myself. <laughs> I'll uh, usually have my dog with me. Yeah. Well, so. It's a nice uh, bandmate. She's I guess. my gigging pup. Yes. <laughs> she does. She goes to every gig. Even in the summer, I keep her somewhere where it's not as uh, hot. Yeah. So. Uh, kind of be roadie if, if you can strap a few instruments or something to her. She's back. unbelievable. <laughs> Well, shout out to you, dog. Um, yeah, so we've got time for about one more song. Sure. So, um, is this one got a name or is song number four? I, again, I, you know, who is that wacko guy who had numbers on his songs? One, <laughs> two, three, four. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess it's number four. But see, a lot of it is I, I'm uncomfortable giving these names because of copyright and such mm. royalties and if someone hears something that's a quote from a tune that isn't mine mm. so I like the idea of song number four it's got the anonymity that you need <laughs> <laughs> well take it away
song for Carl. An absolute pleasure to have you in. Thank you so much for coming. It's been a, gr a great pleasure for me. Yeah. It's the most fun I've had tonight, I can tell you that. <laughs> I'm glad you uh, yes. agreed to an evening gig as well. I feel like oh, we got lucky no, on that one. That's great. Thank you. Honestly, it's been an honor and a pleasure yeah. to uh, play for, for you. Oh, I'm glad we got this recorded as well. As you yes. seldom record anything, so now I've actually got something to listen like to. Like ever. <laughs> like, um, um, is it okay to mention a name or not? Yeah, so no, much? go ahead. Christina Stikos yeah. uh, in uh, Lincoln, Vermont, has a new studio, mm. and she's invited me. I actually helped her uh, build it because oh. uh, she moved from Chelsea. Uh, Pepper Mill, I believe that's what it's called, Pepper Mill studio i hope i got that right christina <laughs> so um but she's in bristol now yeah and lincoln pardon me and um she's invited me but i have not gone again i really enjoy just playing and having the music go out into the atmosphere and float away for, uh, <laughs> to be keep company with all the other millions <laughs> trillions of musical notes that are floating around yeah. in the atmosphere well, I thought well, we're going to be listening back to this interview just so I can give you a listen again. And yes. would love it if you ever did record anything and would for sure put it on uh, on the radio when we don't have... Yes, yes, I, I will eventually. My, my life is starting to calm down because of the sale of my mm. family's building and now I'm officially retired and maybe I will be at Pepper Mill... <laughs> <laughs> studio yeah the debut artist i've also noticed the tank oh what and people that confuse me with michael chorney because of my hair i'll be walking down <laughs> church street hello michael and i'll say i'm not michael but michael records at the tank oh i see he was one of the first people i have interviewed for this yeah. show about six years ago but now. he and he lives in bristol yeah also so, a very good artist and he also has a studio yeah, uh, he's uh, the man's a, a phenom as well when it comes to music. Right. Um, but as I said, that's that's all we got for tonight. Uh, next week uh, there is nothing. We are off next week, which is good. And we've got some other stuff coming up later on, or at the start of November, but nothing next week. Um, so um, afraid this will be all you hear from me for the next uh, few weeks. But for now, this has been W O M M L P operating at Burlington, Vermont, one hundred five point nine The Radiator. It's been the Rocket Shop. I've been your host, Tom Proctor, and good night. Right on nine. Not bad. Right. Not bad. That was excellent. I the, I was the first ever high school.